The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time to go on the mat. The Cedar Valley's longest running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. Welcome to On the Mat. I am Kyle Klingman of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum, joined by the flamethrower Doug Van Gelder. Hey, buddy. Flamethrower. Yeah. Because you just, when you throw flames, things get burnt or they turn into something even better than what they are. Okay. I'm not sure what that signif- signifies. But well, I, I'm hoping it signifies a new program for Grundy Center. Well, I do too. I, uh, I'm kind of excited to hear that they're at least contemplating it. So it's not nothing, a done nothing's, deal. Nothing's locked in yet, but uh, a parent over there. His son said he wasn't going to continue wrestling after being in a youth program, wrestling around a lot of those youth tournaments. But he wanted to be a Spartan wrestler. He didn't want to be some other school wrestler. And I thought, that's, you know, that's great. So this father, I think it was Scott Muller was his name, uh, went out and got a bunch of information, found out that uh, there was one kid from Grundy Center that wrestled, I think, last year. And essentially the cost was about $3,800 for the cost of the uh, transportation. Okay. You know, you start throwing those numbers out to a school board. Of course, you could just about, you know, you could have a bare bones program for 3800 Well, so if you had to weight it as far as what the chances are that Grundy Center. I, I'd say it's 90% in favor right now. Okay. And those who don't know, I, I hope enough listeners have chimed in enough to know that Doug is an icon in Grundy County and Blackhawk County. Doug went to the to Grundy Center, grew up there, uh, is still a wanted man in Grundy Center. And we've talked about, I mean, there was an article on Doug in the Grundy paper, and so we've gone on and on. So if you're coming in late and you're just catching up about uh, Doug Van Gelder and, and getting up to speed on that, that's why this is such a big deal, because we've talked over the course of 10 years about Grundy Center. On well, yeah, show. and my, my you know disappointment with them ending, essentially dropping the program never did set well with me, and uh, it's nice to know that they've got a new board with some eye on the future, I think. How much of this had to do with the article on you? Oh, I don't think it had anything you to don't? do with that. You think it was just, I didn't know if some of the players was, that were mentioned got well, excited. Some of the and, players are mentioned. I mean, it's that's that's how strong the fraternity of wrestling is when you look at it. I mean, uh, yeah, Scotty Muller, I, his grandfather and I wrestled on the same team there in Grundy Center. Uh, his grandmother was a teacher there in Grundy Center that uh, was in happened to be in my class. Class, so you know, there's there's some connections that way. Just uh, just from having grown up in Grundy Center and being in that sport. Yeah, well, it's got to be exciting for you. Well, it is. It it's got to be really exciting. So, I'm uh, I'm glad that it's going in that direction. I'm glad it's going in that direction. And I, I'm excited because uh, I've ha- I had a chance to uh, to go to a freestyle tournament in uh, in Belle Plaine. I, I hadn't been to just an open freestyle tournament in a while, and got a chance to see a lot of people that. I have connections with the at last the one you were at your wrestle then? Well, no, I've been to quite a few since okay. since that point. But uh, the Fort Madison tournament, which isn't what it used to be. If you look at uh, that Mick Pickford uh, freestyle tournament in Fort Madison, that was a who's who of people who have wrestled in that. Oh, one. yeah. Tom Brands, Terry Brands, used to be Eric Aiken. Just all of those Iowa guys would go down there and wrestle in that if they were red shirting <clears> or whatnot. And <throat> you look at some of the past champions, it's pretty amazing. But just I love when you transition into freestyle. And I got to admit, as far as just an entertainment value, freestyle is a better product. It's just fun because they go out there and they're loose, and it is. It's what the name is. It's a freestyle. And I got excited because Jim Witt's kid was down there, and I love that uh, Jim, who uh, we both know, was in my class of 95 and, years in, in uh, Cedar Falls, that he has his kid going. It's just fun to reconnect. Yeah. Uh, here, here's a guy that pinned me when I was in seventh grade, and I always remind him of that. And uh, 
it's just fun to have those connections again. But you just see a lot of people that you know. The guy that gets me excited, and he's now the guy in high school that I'm going to follow and, and want to see where he goes, is Tyrell Gordon at uh, Waterloo East. He got fourth this last year. Love his story. Didn't start wrestling until eighth grade. Didn't wrestle this ninth grade year because of uh, injuries. So pretty much from 10th grade until now, he got fourth at state. He's on a trajectory where his his upside and his ceiling is just off the charts. He's so good he, in the Greco side. He's got a back arch like no other. He's got some great skills. So I want to see. He loves the Greco Roman. He huh? loves it. He loves uh, the sport and he wants to get better. He's just looking for better competition because it's hard when you're a heavier weight to find good competition and guys that you can bang with. That's exciting. Yeah. So. If you're following wrestling in the area, especially I know Jay Llewellyn is excited about his potential and what he can do. Tyrell Gordon, I want to be our uh, our next state champion in the area. I know that uh, West and Cedar Falls have some some people in the mix, and uh, just follow him. I, that's my suggestion. We'll keep up to date on what he's doing. But I think How old he, is Jim's boy now? Jim, who? Wits. He's in uh, I want to say sixth or seventh grade. Yeah, so. Fun to see him compete. And Is he going to be Holmes or Pete? I think Pete. I think Pete. Boy, that hurts, Jim. Does that that hurt? That hurts, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got hey, we got a new uh, Cedar Falls head wrestling coach. Michael Kelly's the new head coach at uh, Cedar Falls High School. So that's great. Congratulations to him. I think it's the the right fit for this area. I uh, agree. You, you have a two time state champion. Went to the University of Iowa. Uh, has a, a great demeanor. Pretty strong pedigree there. Strong pedigree, but I, I just like him. He's personable. Commitment to the sport. But yeah. Very much so. And uh, I, I couldn't be more excited about him taking the reins of that. I think he's probably pretty excited. I, I hope so. I haven't talked to him about it. I, he's the guy that uh, I've wanted to get in here in studio and, and talk to him for just a, a couple segments sure. and, uh, and get him in. So uh, I, I hope we can make that happen. And he works hard during the day and has a, a lot of commitments with uh, Blackhawk Roofing. But I'd love to get uh, Michael Kelly in here for uh, a couple segments and just talk to him and see what his plans are for the future because it's a perfect system for him because they have USA Mat Club, which is going to be the feeder program for sure. Cedar, Cedar Falls. Falls High School. And who owns USA Mat Club? It's his dad, <laughs> and his brother oversees it. And so you have a great system here to make Cedar Falls a power again, and that, that really gets well, me excited. That, that's the whole thing. You have to develop a system. You know, you got to get them started at the right level at the right time. Take them through, uh, and they got to learn something different at each level they go to, and that's a good start. Yeah, I'm not sure who are, who are the junior high coaches. Any idea in Cedar Falls now? Uh, I do. Um, I just got to think about. Uh, I just can't think of. Can't, can't pull it up named right off yeah, the top. Yeah, and I do, and, and I apologize if they're listening. It's just uh, <clears throat> Doug put me on the spot, and it's yeah, one of those things. Yeah, my, I did. <laughs> my, my mind's racing. I'm good at that. Well, I know, and it, it hurts me because I, I can't pull it off real quick. But uh, uh, I, they've they've been instrumental in the in the Gable Museum, and, and it hurts. I can't think of their name right now. So. Uh, but we're excited about where Cedar Falls wrestling can go, and, and uh, it's going to be a special time for Michael Kelly. It's going to be really special. Uh, we got to talk about uh, today's show. We have uh, Iowa State flavor. A lot of people have wondered about uh, the, the great coaching hires from Kevin Dresser, Mike Zadick, and Brent Metcalf, both assistant coaches at Iowa State, will be on the show today. We get to talk about their involvement in the new, uh, new era of Iowa State wrestling. I had some thoughts about that on the way in today, thinking about – what we can ask them, and I just, uh, and it, it doesn't have to happen today, but I'd be interested in seeing how the recruiting process works. We know Dresser had Gable over to his house and sleep in his bed, mm-hmm. but I don't see that happening a lot around anymore. So I just wondered, you know, how does a coaching staff get together? Do they go out and look for recruits out of a certain weight, or do they just wait for recommendations from coaches, or how does that whole process work? It's a great question, and I've I've always wondered that myself because it's an area that neither of us have to yeah. be engaged in. But yeah. uh, just just going back to a past conversation from uh, from Rob Cole, uh, who's the head wrestling coach at Cornell University, he said, "What you're looking for is not what you need right now; it's what you need three years from now." And so he said, "What he has is a spreadsheet with." 
the 10 weight classes and you plug in where are you going to be in, in 2021 and, and you fill in where that potential weight class could be. It's not a, uh, a surefire predictor because a guy could be anywhere from 165 to 184 depending on how much they grow and what their weight class could be. So you never know with injuries, but I think you're trying to figure out where do we need someone at a certain time. And so if you're the University of Iowa and you're trying to recruit another 125-pounder, it's going to be tough maybe to get the top-end recruit when you have Spencer Lee there for the next four to five years. And so how do you get that person in the fold and, and the right, uh, the right sure. personnel? So it's a, it's a tough battle. Uh, everything I hear is the hardest weight class to get is 125 and heavyweight. That's, that's kind of strategic. I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff that probably makes and breaks programs. It how sure that does. process goes. Yeah, it sure does. You know, maybe there'll be some coaches that don't even want to share their process with us. Possibly. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's too hard to figure out once you get a system on how you do it. But I, I think <laughs> anytime you can get someone good in the program, you're going to do it. Sure. I don't think you're ever going to not want to get someone. But you have scholarship dollars that you but, have to allocate. Yeah, but then you have to look at it and be fair, too. Like, just look at that Spencer Lee situation. You know, you can't go say, yeah, you can make varsity this year to another guy that's at 125. You know, I'll guarantee it. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't. So you got to just watch what's going on. And it takes a lot of strategic thinking, I would I would think. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I think <laughs> even going to Jay Robinson, I think uh, part of his pitch was, hey, you can come and we'll give you X amount of, your, of the 9.9 scholarships you get for that particular year. I'm sure he's saying you also get to work at J. Robinson camps through the summer and you get to make some additional income as a camp counselor. I think that's a recruiting pitch, too. And uh, I don't know how he did that a lot of times, but I think that's part of it. And if you have a good camp system, I think that's a, a good recruiting tool. And I, I know that a, guy, a team like Penn State, who's rolling right now, I think it's a little easier to sell to say we'll give you 30%, but you get to be part of this culture. That's going to pay dividends for these kids. I think uh, 30% over 50%, if you get to be on a winning team, makes a big uh, big difference on how you recruit. And I know Iowa was that way too. Yeah. I know that when you're, when you're rolling like that and you're the team, it's a lot easier to recruit and, uh, and say we're going to give you less, but you're going to get more on the back end because you're part of this winning culture. But uh, Mike Zadick and Brent Metcalf are going to be on the show today. Excited to hear what they have to say about their process and their journey to become Cyclones. What a pair. Yeah, it's, it's hard. What to, a pair. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be great. Yeah. At least they got the gold yet. They don't have that black and gold, but they'll have the, they'll have the cardinal, cardinal and gold. gold. Are you excited about them being I on? Am, are you? I am. Yeah. You know, a long time ago, Gable was at Iowa State, and he went to Iowa, and I saw what he did. So it's about time he returned a favor and sent some over Iowa State's yeah. way. Well, <laughs> isn't it amazing, though, when you when you look at this, is that every single member of the Iowa State staff so far, because you have Kevin Dresser, you have Mike Zadick as the associate head coach, you have St. John, and then you have Brent Metcalf as the volunteer coach. All of those have ties to the University of Iowa. Lou Bannock still there in an academic arena? At Iowa State? No, Ed Bannock. Ed, I'm yeah, sorry. He, he's there. But of that staff, all of that staff went to the University of Iowa and all have ties to Virginia Tech because Brent Metcalf started out there for sure. that one year. So pretty amazing that it all came through Blacksburg. Uh, you just can't make this stuff up in some ways. And all of the coaches right now in the state for Division One have gone through Virginia Tech and have gone through the University of Iowa. Schwab was there as an, as an assistant under Tom Brands, who was there as head coach, and then Kevin Dresser took over for Brands. It's just you shake your head and wonder how all of this could happen, and now they're all in the state and they're all battling against each other, and uh, makes it for a pretty exciting, <laughs> exciting uh, scenario here in the state of Iowa. We got to talk about uh, rule changes that uh, are probably going to pr- take place. Uh, they're proposing a. Uh, a new neutral position rule where the referee will verbally announce a danger signal to any wrestler who becomes stationary on his back. So this is for those scrambles that you see a lot where you're holding onto a leg and you're just trying to scramble out and get a stalemate. Uh, with his shoulders at an angle of 90 degrees or less on the mat surface, verbal announcement will be followed by an audible three count. If the, if the referee reaches the third count and the wrestler is still on his back in that scramble, 
within a 90 degree angle, control will be considered to have been established and a takedown will be awarded. That's going to change our sport big time because that is a position that a lot of wrestlers are in right now. It, uh, it's going to make it a new sport. It really is in a lot of ways. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the referees handle it. Uh, yeah, the referees are going to have a lot on their plate with that. Oof. Uh, looks like uh, headgear could be optional now. Uh, that's a, I think that's a big rule change, too. I don't like that. Why not? I don't think it's necessary to have that scar on your body to prove you're a tough wrestler. Well, no. <laughs> but if they don't want to wear headgear, they don't want to wear headgear. I think that it can might. You, go- can you even wear headgear at the Olympic level? Well, you can. I think if the uh, if your your opponent doesn't want you to, I think he can tell you to take it off. I think. There, there's a stipulation there. I'd have to look well, into that. I just wondered. I mean, it's just I, I, I don't see the, you know, we wouldn't let them play football without a helmet. And that's probably more because of brain injuries or whatever, but still nothing wrong with that, and I think everybody should be required to have a mouth guard. Well, I, I think what you're saying there, if we look into the future, so let's just say athletes start going without headgear. I'm guessing it's going to go back the first time that an ear gets popped and there's a bloody mat from that ear getting popped. Because I could see that happening, those big ears, and it it gets... I've had it happen. uh, uh, During competition? Sure. I I had a really serious cauliflower ear problem when I was in high school. I spent most of the week with my head wrapped, even while during classes. Well... Because it just, you know... I had to get them drained, and then they had to keep the pressure on them so they didn't swell up again. Well, Then I go to a tournament. By the third match, they're throbbing. Well, that, these are proposed, so we'll see if that, uh, yeah. that takes here uh, in a few weeks. Other uh, recommendations, uh, maximum of six matches per day, which I don't think is going to be a big deal. Also, they're reviewing uh, hiring a third party for the uh, official review on uh, the coaches' challenges. Oh, hallelujah. You like that? I like that. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. No referee should be able to, should even be forced into having to go out and critique his own work. Yeah, I, and I, I think that, uh, I think it's always good to have a third party on that and take a look. Uh, I, I always think back, though, to when you had that uh, Gable era where, it was all about grinding it out and keeping the pace on and the boo birds when the, the shoelaces come out. It certainly does take the flow out of a match is when you have the video review. It does change the dynamic of a match. And that's the hardest part for me because I want to see the competition keep moving. But to get it right, I think it's important. But uh, maybe can, we could have him do. You keep doing push-ups till we get done reviewing. This. Well, <laughs> you know, if you if you want to try re- proposing a rule like that, I'll let you do yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, if you have the ends to make that happen, that would be uh, fine with me. Hey, this is uh, an Iowa State show. It's also an Iowa show, and as we mentioned, it's also a Virginia Tech show because there's connection with all three programs. We have uh, Mike Zadick coming up next. He's the new associate head wrestling coach. He'll be on the mat next. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. When all you want is sports, all you need is 1650 The Fan. We are back on the mat, 1650 The Fan. I am Kyle Klingman of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum. We have new Iowa State Associate Head Wrestling Coach with us. He was a three-time All-American for the University of Iowa, was most recently an assistant coach and associate head wrestling coach at Virginia Tech. 2008 Olympian Mike Zadek. How are you, Mike? Doing good, thank you. Great to have you back in Iowa. Does it feel good to uh, to be back in the state? Oh, it's awesome. I love it. Where uh, Where are you living in Ames? You have a house all uh, all lined up? No, no. I'm kind of a picky guy, so it's it's hard to find a place. So I've been got people out looking and helping me right now, but um, haven't found my dream home yet. So what does that mean? You're just uh, sleeping in your truck? No, I still own my property over in Solon, Iowa, so I go back, and then I'm staying in a hotel here, and and uh, we actually just picked up a temp house um, to uh, stay in uh, okay. just today, actually, okay. so uh, for the next month, it's just a month to month where uh, we can have a place here on the ground and then also hunt 
hunt for an individual house. So what did you do when you were in uh, Montana for that period and then Virginia Tech with that Solon house? Did you rent that out or did you just keep that uh, so you could go back to it anytime you wanted? Uh, no, I had it rented out um, off and on, um, but I had a couple good renters. Um, uh, one, both of them stayed for a year. Both of them offered me um, money. They wanted to buy it. I just kind of wasn't in, the, in that position wanting to get rid of it yet and I'm actually uh, doing some upkeep on the weekends when I have the time here, and I'm going to put it up and then try and get rid of it, try and sell it in the summer. Your uh, your beard has reached legendary status. How often is that a topic topic of conversation? It's crazy. It is every single time there's a interview or a talk. And yeah, it's actually getting kind of funny. Because <laughs> did I hear you say there was actually you and a Twitter I go account? You're not way back with the beard, though. Well, I know. What was that? Yeah, I mean, I think you said there's a Twitter account for your beard. Yeah, the guys back in Virginia started it, but I think it's been pretty uh, quiet the last couple. Well, I don't even know how long, but. He hasn't said much in a while. I know that. Yeah, that's uh, it's a lot of fun. We are uh, we're on the mat with Mike Zadek, new associate head wrestling coach for Iowa State. I want to go through your timeline. You were an assistant coach at the University of Iowa. Uh, you left there and went back to Montana. During that couple years you were in Montana, there's been uh, articles about it talking about what you did. How did you stay current on the sport of wrestling? Um, well, a few things. I mean, I followed it. Like when I left Iowa. I- I followed, you know, Derek St. John and Matt McDonough and Tony Ramos and Bobby Telford and the Lost Houses and all those guys I was around and coaching, um, Mike Evans, all those guys. It's just um, the Moore, Nick Moore and stuff. So you build relationships over all these years. Um, you still want to see how they do, and you were invested in it. And, uh, you know, to me it was, I was in a cabin, but I had a, a crazy thing. I had fiber optics to where I was at because of a dam that was built on a river up up above me, a big, a big dam. So it ran fiber optic to it, and I happened to get a line of fiber optics into my property to where I had wireless Internet faster than anywhere. So <laughs> uh, I could watch video. I could watch the television, stay online, and and then in the summer times I did wrestling camps and Obviously, having my brother involved with the sport at the highest level he is, um, you know, we communicate like brothers do and yeah. stay current. Well, And I hear that uh, Kevin Dresser says he literally chased you out of the mountains and literally went after you to come to Virginia Tech. What did all of that look like? How, how persistent was he to get you to go to Blacksburg? <laughs> he was very persistent to the point where I had to tell him to leave me alone. Because... <laughs> He actually, uh, he's he's good at what he does, and I told him uh, I need a week. He said, need a week, and I'll let you know. And he didn't give me that week. He kept calling me, and I just finally said, hey, leave me alone. I, I literally need to, like, and he's like, okay, okay. I really just needed to, like, I need to, I'm a, maybe a slow learner or, I just needed to process it. I needed to sit there. I needed to fish. I needed to sit on my porch and drink coffee and go for a hike and really see if I wanted to walk away from that. And, you know, I wasn't making any money. I was enjoying life every day and doing whatever I wanted. But being a coach and being an athlete in the sport of wrestling, you're on a schedule around the clock. And that's all I had done since, you know, I was young all the way till that time I was 33 34 years old so it was kind of a nice three and a half four years to just wake up and make up whatever the heck I was going to do that day so um it was a big thing for me to say all right you're going to go back in the small world of wrestling and be that committed again and you know it was a good timing like I've said before it was good timing because I was kind of hungry for it and then after being out in Virginia Tech and meeting everybody and dresser answering the bell to me and, and some of the needs I needed uh, and I asked for it. And then it was, it was like, hey, let's do it. And we literally said, let's do it a year and see how it goes. And we built a good relationship, and um, it continues to grow, understanding one another, and there's give and take, and, and uh, him and his family. And 
and then uh, you know St. John and just kind of grow and our family growing a little bit bigger. It's um, it's been good. Uh, were you hurt when you left Iowa City? Was I hurt? Like yeah. injured? No, just uh, emotionally hurt. Was it hard to leave? I mean, just going off on those terms. Very. Were you? Yep. And, and I was. so g- going to Montana, did that uh, patch some of those things up? Yeah, it was really good for me. You know, it was um, it was what I knew, and I had family there that I moved away from when I was 18 years old, and here I came back at 33. And um, there's two things I knew I loved outside of wrestling, and that was my family and my my mountains. And um, I made it back there and was able to spend as much time with my niece and nephew um, as I wanted to or my mom and dad or cousins and just little things that mean a lot. My family, we're a very close family, but uh, making my niece's birthday or my nephew's birthday, I never went to their birthday party. Um, and here they are, six, seven, eight, nine years old now. And I was able to, hey, I'll, I'll see you there tomorrow. I'll be there. So that was big. Or going to a, a family's graduation or family's wedding or a dinner where four family members are getting together for dinner. And just those things were... Um, highlights of my life, and it wasn't going to the U.S. Open anymore. It wasn't going to the Midlands anymore. It was it was those simpler things that made uh, made my life enjoyable. And part of it was probably having a little bad taste in my mouth about the sport of wrestling, to where it was the alternative that kind of get me balanced out and feeling good. Is that a lifestyle you want to return to after you get uh, get done with your coaching uh, in wrestling? Yes, I do. You do? Yep. It's, yep. It's it's truly um, hard even now. I love wrestling. And I love coaching, and and I'm fully committed. But um, you know, part of taking this job was um, I, I I you know I have pros and cons, and I write them out, and I look at things and discuss it with my family and stuff, and. I, you know, I know someday I want to be back there um, and en- enjoy that, but you have a window of opportunity in your life where you can um, influence and grow as a coach and influence the athletes, and I'm, I'm in that, that spot right now, and I enjoy the heck out of it. But at the same time, it was something that I know the mountains are always going to be there. Um, cattle are always going to need to be branded, and, and fish are always going to need to be caught, and elk are always going to need to be shot. And as long as I can do that later in life, I'll be all right. We are on the mat with Mike Zadick, new associate head wrestling coach at Iowa State University. I, I want to do this. Uh, we're in Cedar Falls, Iowa. We have a, a listenership of Cedar Falls. I'm just going to give you three names of people who have an association with Cedar Falls, Iowa, and I just want you to tell me what you think about this person. First name I want to give you, he was a three-time state champion for Cedar Falls. you want Fa- a real response? You want me to be real? I want you to be real. Okay. Completely real. He was a three-time right. state champion for Cedar Falls High School, was a teammate of yours at Iowa, Josh Budke. <laughs> Josh Budke. Um, that just makes me smile. He was a teammate, um, a good friend, kind of like a roommate my first year of college, even though I didn't stay in his room. But uh, him and Jeff Stewart were roommates, and we are all pretty close at the time. Um, and I hung out in their dorm quite a bit, but... You know, we catch up time to time, Josh and I. Um, he, um, you know, after after our senior year together, um, he, he kind of went away from the sport and got married and had kids. And, you know, I think I'm, I'm friends with him or his wife, I know, on Facebook. And I see updates of the kids and, and so on and so forth. And ran into his dad a couple times here and there. Um, he was at my induction when I was in the Hall of Fame here the Glenn Brand Hall of Fame, but, yep. um, no, he was always, um, a good friend of mine, a good teammate, um, and again, I guess, you know, he, he, I think at that time he was soured on how things played out for him, and I don't think he really blamed me by any means, but because of the association with, um, where he, where he was at, he had to kind of walk away and leave it behind him. And I'm just kind of making that up right now because that's just what I would assume. Right. Um, 
which we never had any hard feelings whatsoever towards each other. It's just he needed to get away from it, and we catch up now, and um, we'll have lunch again soon, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, opinion very high on him. All right, uh, n- name number two. He's uh, the new head wrestling coach at Cedar Falls High School, former Iowa wrestler Michael Kelly. Can I swear? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> All right, well... That that kid's crazy. <laughs> no, no, I love Michael Kelly. Um, we were really close when I was in Iowa. Um, he is. Uh, we've always stayed in touch. He's he's uh, been uh, just a good athlete to me. A good coach, a uh, good coach athlete relationship. We've always had, and um, just funny, you know. I really, I really like the kid. Like his dad. And Dad's crazy too, and I, I love that about him because I think uh, we're all a little crazy. All, all but, right. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you. Name name number three. This is the final name we're going to give you. He's uh, a former teammate of, teammate of yours. He's the head wrestling coach at Northern Iowa, Doug Schwab. Hmm. My opinion. Doug and I are very close. Um, I always laugh at it because Doug's a darn good person and um, I used to hate him I used to hate his guts and we wrestled each other uh, he beat me off the team and when I was at Iowa and he was he was kind of the enemy because um, he was keeping me from what I wanted to do and um, you know he he got the nod and beat me and and uh, it's funny because we worked out a lot and we got in fights a lot and punched each other and um, we've gotten closer more in our international careers and train together a lot, and he really helped me. I think he feels the same way, and we just have a mutual respect. And I've always stayed close because we coach together and um, have a lot of similarities in our life through the sport of wrestling and uh, have kept that relationship thriving even at Virginia Tech and even now. You know, he's, he's excited I'm back in Iowa, and he let me know that, and he also let me know he's coming to kick my butt, and I understand that completely, but it's... Um, Nothing against that. We don't want to do that to one another, but at the same time, uh, we have a good, good relationship and a lot of respect for one another. You're listening to Mike Zadick, new associate head wrestling coach at Iowa State University. With you being at Iowa State, what do you want Cyclone Wrestling to look like? Every program has their identity. What is the identity of what you want Iowa State Wrestling to look like? Uh, you know, I don't... I've never really sat and looked at it like that. I guess I want it to look like there's just educated athletes um, and a strong representation of it. And I mean educated academically and athletically. And when I say athletically, and that the sport, when they're competing, is entertaining. Um, it's exceed, it's uh, succeeding. And succeeding to me is, um, taking uh, maybe a, a blue chip and making him invincible or taking a maybe uh, a kid that never even won a state championship and getting him to wrestle maybe outside of his own ability or what he thinks or maybe his friends or family think. Um, so it's mainly a, it's hard to answer except for it's about development, um, enjoyment of it, and it's succeeding no matter what. If you don't even, if you're not winning every single thing, you're still succeeding. So, if that gives you a short answer on it, um, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, and, and as you guys develop your program, I think there's an interesting dynamic here. You guys have been vocal in wanting to develop that uh, freestyle program. Uh, you have an interesting dynamic in that your brother is the head national team coach for freestyle wrestling. How much is that relationship going to play out in how Cyclone Wrestling develops? Well, obviously, being my brother, it's a great it's a great avenue. Um, I'm sure he's probably going to be harder on me than any other coach in the country, just due to the fact that um, you know people are going to throw the favoritism and the card at him, all this and that about well, it's your brother. So and that's just the way it is. It's the way little hens like to cackle about things. But I think we're going to have a good opportunity. Um, just because of our lines of communication, he's my brother, that um, it's going to be a, a good opportunity for our club. Uh, it's going to be a good 
uh, avenue and a good relationship that, like others, you have to build this one. It's done. It's already it's already an open open relationship that uh, we can just build off of as a as a program. So that's exciting. Well, we started with uh, your beard as a topic of conversation. Have you ever thought about leveraging that into a money making opportunity? To get to touch your beard for five dollars in a picture. I mean, have you thought about doing something like that? You know what? I told I told them of Virginia, and I told the guys here when I got to Iowa State. Um, I would um, I'd shave it off if I could raise if anybody with a brain wants to think of an idea where I could contribute to uh, um, sugar diabetes or muscular dystrophy or something out there, some some positive fundraiser for, for kids or, or um, science or health and maybe even a little bit to the Cyclone Wrestling Club, um, breaking it up in percentages, I would do it. Uh, we just have to figure out a way to fundraise to create some income for those those programs and and then um, have the lucky person be able to shave it any way you wanted it all right we uh, are completely off all right left side and right side yeah we got to close out this segment hey it's been great having you on it's fun to have you back in the state uh thanks for uh, coming on the show i know it won't be the last time but uh hope you have a great experience in ames Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, that, that was Mike Zadick, new associate head wrestling coach at Iowa State. Up next, we have volunteer assistant head wrestling coach at Ames. His name's Brent Metcalf. He's next on the mat. Log on and listen online at 1650thefan.com, the online home of 1650 The Fan. We are back on the mat, 1650 The Fan. I am Kyle Klingman of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum, joined by Doug Van Gelder, final guest. He was a two-time NCAA wrestling champion for the University of Iowa, also a three-time finalist. He is now the volunteer assistant coach at Iowa State University. His name is Brent Metcalf. He is on the line with us. How are you, Brent? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're great. Uh, it's great to have you on the show. We just had Mike Zadick on. Now we have you on. And yeah. uh, it's interesting because when uh, when I think of the Tom Brands era of wrestling, the, the person that comes to mind for me first and probably most people is Brent Metcalf. You are very associated with Iowa. Is it strange mm-hmm. now to be a Cyclone and to put on that Cardinal and Gold shirt? Um, yeah, I think right off the bat, the minute you, you put it on, it, it felt strange, but as every day goes by, it becomes uh, more comfortable. It's good. Either way, for me, it's wrestling, and I'm excited about the group of guys that we've started to work with. Um, and, yeah, so for me, it, it felt really weird, the idea, but as I've been transitioning through it, it it's been pretty comfortable, actually. And, and we, we've heard a lot about how Kevin Dresser uh, really shoved uh, Mike Zadick out of the mountains and pursued him. Uh, how did Kevin Dresser approach this with you? What was that process like to get you to become a Cyclone? Um, more or less through a mutual friend um, where he was, I think, kind of just testing the waters to see where I was at and kind of got hooked up, and, and it all happened in just a matter of days. You know, I was actually on my way to Colorado uh, to go find a house to live in when this all went down. And um, like I said, within a matter of days, he made the connection through a friend. I came out, and um, we sealed the deal. You know, so. And, and you were going to be working with Bill Zadick at USA Wrestling. Yeah, now you're working yeah. with Mike Zadick. Mm-hmm. So, what was that conversation with Bill like when you had to say, "Hey, I'm now taking the Iowa State job"? Bill was very good. He was very supportive. Um, he even kind of because I to me it was it was really hard for me to you know turn down my commitment. You know, and I'm kind of big on being a man of my word. And so that was the hardest part for me was like, hey, this is a great opportunity, but I said I was going to do this, and I really don't want to go back on what I said I was going to do. And he was really good um, on just, you know, saying, hey, it, it's okay. It is a good opportunity. Um, and so I appreciate that. I appreciate the support that, that he gave and USA Wrestling, all USA Wrestling in general, the entire organization um, was very professional and supportive of uh, the change, and they get it. Um, because I will still, in one capacity or another, still be working with the best guys in the country producing freestyle wrestlers for USA Wrestling. 
Have you thought about the storyline? Because we certainly have that uh, all of the staff have that connection with Virginia Tech, and you started there, redshirted mm-hmm. there for a year, and then uh, Kevin Dresser actually takes over for Tom Brands, who was your coach during college. You followed him to Iowa. Now you're wrestling, or uh, ex- excuse me, coaching for the guy that replaced Tom at uh, Virginia Tech. W- when you think about those mm-hmm. storylines, is it kind of overwhelming when you think about how interesting that all played out? Yeah, I think right at first, you know, when the entire – the idea was pitched to me, and not pitched to me, but I, I heard about the opportunity. How about that? Um, yeah. All those things came to mind. I was like, man, this is, um, there's a lot of uh, things here <laughs> revolved around this change, right? Um, but it was good. It was good for me to come here to sit down and talk to Dresser kind of face-to-face and um, kind of just communicate through that whole scenario, um, and I felt comfortable. That was the biggest thing was when I came um, I felt comfortable. I felt like this is a place that I could be, that my family could be, um, and that's kind of what I went with. I mean, you were arguably the best recruit in the nation coming out of Michigan. Uh, why did you go to Virginia Tech anyway? I went to Virginia Tech for Tom Brands, period. <laughs> yeah, oh, just plain and <laughs> yeah, simple, so that I, was you know, it? I grew up, I grew up, um, I, you probably heard the story, but I grew up um, watching videos of Tom and Terry Brands. Um, those were... I didn't even know who they were, but I just knew how they wrestled, you know. Um, and that's how I kind of emulated my style uh, growing up in the sport of wrestling up and through high school. And then when I had the opportunity to wrestle for him, um, it was an easy decision, you know. And then he came in, in, in my house and really got me even more fired up um, and excited about what he was all about. And um, so, yeah, so the decision for me, Tom thought it was, a hard one, but it was a pretty easy one. Now, now from what I understand, uh, you transferred to Iowa and you forfeited that uh, that freshman year where you because uh, yep. you redshirted. Uh, it, if I remember right, if you would have stayed at Virginia Tech for a year, you would not have uh, had to take that uh, that one year uh, probation period, and you could have could have had four years of eligibility. Is that correct? Um. So what you're saying is if I would have stayed for at Virginia Tech for one year and then transferred to Iowa? Yeah, you would have had a full four years. Yeah, I don't know how okay. it would have all worked out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know exactly uh, what would have, what could have or should have or didn't happen, right? Um, what I do know is that the university had the right to do what they wanted to do. Um, it was within the rules for them to do that. Um, I was committed to staying with Tom Brands. And that's the decision I did, and I think it was it was a really good decision for me at the time. I had a lot of great experiences that year, um, as far as being able to compete internationally with Terry, who was at the training center at the time. Um, so I grew a ton during that year. So when I look back at it, I don't I don't even consider um, the proposal you just made as, as an option because right. the way that it worked out for me, it was it was you know it was the best I think. We are on the mat with Brent Metcalf, two-time NCAA wrestling champion for the University of Iowa. He is now volunteer assistant coach at Iowa State University. And as we look at uh, what Iowa State's going to look like, uh, how fast is progress going to be? I know that Kevin Dresser said in his press conference that we have to be patient. I know that uh, mm-hmm. you guys aren't patient people. You want results now. What's yeah. the picture going to look like for next season? It's hard to say. Um, I've probably been in there for, let's call it a dozen practices at best, um, as we're transitioning, because I'm commuting between Iowa City and here and Ames. I'm in Ames right now. Um, looking for a house. Once I get um, kind of my feet on the ground here in an everyday role, I maybe would have a better idea of a guesstimate of where it would be at. I know one thing. Um, I know that there's excitement in that room. I know that there's good energy. Um, there's certainly a lot of talent. Um, and we got to continue to work on it, work on those guys, and um, kind of see where we get. When you go into a job like this, now you uh, ha- have really kind of your first official capacity as being a, a wrestling coach. Mm-hmm. H- how do you create your own identity? I know that everyone identifies you with a, a Hawkeye, and, and you were Brands' uh, main wrestler during that time. How do you become Brent mm-hmm. Metcalf and just have a standalone identity? Oh, I don't know. I think that I've kind of had my own identity all along and then I've had a number of years post post college um, that I guess you could say has been my own identity um, so how do I do that in the, in the coaching world I think you continue to stand for the things that you stand for doing things right um, doing the very best you can 
and take it kind of one step at a time, you know. Um, it's a big learning experience for me. Like you said, this is the first time in like a, a full capacity. So I was around the college program and I, I knew maybe surface level stuff about what was going on and how things worked. But my mind was geared towards training and ultimately my number one priority was, you know, me and getting myself ready to compete at the highest level. Um, so now it's cool because it's, it, there's a lot of different things about college wrestling that I'm having to learn about. Um, and, and I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of that. Um, and I'm excited for that opportunity. Are you done competing? Oh, probably. I, I would never count myself out just because I have my health. Um, my body's very healthy. I know that the direction they're going with a two-hour weigh-in probably makes it about impossible for me to make 143 on a two-hour weigh-in. So. Yeah. Well, Mike uh, Zadek talked about the battles he had with Doug Schwab. What were the battles mm-hmm. like with you and uh, Mike Zadek when you guys were in the wrestling room? They were good. Were they? they? Were good. Mike, when I, Mike was a coach slash um, training partner slash teammate. You know, it was one of those things because we were, we were both competing. Um, I, when I was in college, I was still competing internationally, right? So we were training side by side while he was my coach, you know. We've always had a really great relationship. Um, Mike was the guy who I would go to in the room um, when I really needed a good one, you know, where I needed a guy that was quicker and scrambly and um, I could always get a I, – I, it was one of those things where it's like, all right, I know I need it, a good battle. Hey, Mike, let's let's go on this day, you know. So we both kind of prep for that day, and uh, we scrapped hard. So it was always good. Him and, and Schwab, too. Schwab was obviously um, with me at Virginia Tech, and uh, yeah. that was that was a, a lot of years of him whooping my butt. Uh, before I, I finally came around. So so we know you have a, a good relationship with Mike Zadick and uh, Derek mm-hmm. St. John. Did you have much of a relationship with Kevin Dresser before he pursued you to be this uh, this role? No, no, not really. Um, outside okay. of the few conversations that we had, um, you know, at Virginia Tech when he took over that role, um, and then him bringing me in here. So, like I said, um, there's a lot of, uh, you could say you're going out on a limb because you don't know you don't know a person, right? Um, I just like I said, I went kind of with my my gut and how I felt. And uh, when I came here, I felt comfortable. I felt um, there was no questions left on my mind, you know, um, about it, about any of it. So uh, yeah, and that'll be for him and I. That'll be a, a continuing as we develop our relationship and, and grow. So. so when when this broke and the news came out that uh, you were going to be at Iowa State. Uh, how much did your phone explode? Yeah, I got a lot. <laughs> I got a lot. Um, I I made a point to kind of reach out to some of the the um, important people in my life uh, right before the news broke, just so that they heard it from me, sort of thing. Um, and then a lot of from a lot of different areas. So yeah, it it def- I think it was definitely. And and it, and what's cool about it is that is that there is excitement about it. And that's something I'm really excited about, is that there's like a renewed excitement here in, in, uh, in Ames. And um, that's exciting for me because it's, it's good to feel like you have that support, like you have people that are behind you. Um, like I said, I'm feeling it from the team, um, but now we got to get to work and we got to start producing because that excitement will dwindle fast if you don't start producing. We're on the mat with Brent Metcalf, volunteer assistant wrestling coach at Iowa State so when you're walking in Ames and uh I'm assuming people are stopping you what do they want to talk about um just hey congrats we're we're glad to have you on board most of the people I've ran into have been um people other people a part of the athletic um athletic coaching staff right um and it's they're, they're all excited they're excited about uh about the new staff they're excited about change they're excited about um the opportunity we have ahead of us so when you grow up Hawkeye, you were a Hawkeye, you were part of that program for such a long time, do you feel like you have to abandon all of that and just become all Cyclone, or do you embrace still your uh, your Hawkeye roots? Um, it's maybe a little different for me because I didn't grow up Hawkeye, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've certainly been um, a Hawkeye through and through since 2006, right? So about 11 years. So there's a lot of years there. Um I certainly won't be able to abandon it because my wife has lived in Iowa City for 30 years. Yeah. So she's still 
she still loves that town and she loves the Hawkeyes. Um, but she's excited. I'm excited. We're in a really great place um, as far as this new opportunity in front of us um, and kind of embracing it and uh, kind of making it our own, you know. So uh, what, what's your primary role as volunteer assistant coach? What does Kevin Dresser want you to lock in on? Uh, my my role will be majority just being being a coach, being a coach at all, at all different levels, right? So you've basically got three of us, Mike, um, St. John, and myself. That'll be the three coaches handling um, this team. And then obviously um, – I've got the RTC title as well, um, so I, I'll have a role in that, and I, I'm going to kind of take ownership with that because I do have a, a, a great um, passion for freestyle wrestling, um, building the club, building, getting guys in here um, that are the right type of guys that are competing for the right reason, um, and building that RTC program um, and, and growing it to where we can continue to provide opportunities for the best guys that come out of this program. All right. Uh, hey, we've enjoyed having you on the program. Don't know if you could get a beard quite like Mike Zaddix, but maybe you could give it a shot. Uh, maybe we'll see you no, that, uh, on the I, sideline. I right before that press conference, and <laughs> I was like, I had kind of a rough one, and I was like, man, if I sit next to Mike, I'm going to look real silly. So I cleaned her down. <laughs> good, good idea. Make sure you uh, yep. look polar opposite of that because you can't compete. Establishing his own identity. Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, yep. Yep. it's been fun. Uh, congratulations on the job. It's going to be fun to see how this uh, all plays out for Iowa State Wrestling, and uh, look forward to seeing what next season looks like. I'm counting on Hey, you. thank you very much. All right, that was Brent Metcalf. He's the new volunteer assistant coach at Iowa State. You can just tell there's momentum going there. I know that doesn't translate into wins quite yet, but uh, there's a lot of good things going on in Cyclone Wrestling Nation. It's been a fun show for Mike Zadick, Brent Metcalf, and flamethrower Doug Van Gelder. I'm Kyle Klingman. You've been listening to On the Mat. You've been listening to On the Mat, the Cedar Valley's longest-running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Roland Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.